Hi, it's Dr. Steve from Misericordia University, and welcome to the fourth and final video in our fourth week of class in the class Principles of Interface Design. During this video, let's take a look at how to design a Prezi. The purpose of week four's class is to focus on navigation. So in our first video, you'll recall that we took a look at designing navigation and navigational strategies and also designing a menu within an application. And then we looked at direct application of navigational ideas to creating a virtual museum using PowerPoint, designing a PowerCast. And finally, in this video, let's take a brief look at designing a Prezi. So in this video, our purpose will not be to show you how to use the Prezi tool online, but rather uh, to take a look strictly at the design issues that are involved in Prezi. Because in some schools, Prezi is, is used more often and more heavily, and in other schools, it's really not used at all. So we won't focus on how to use, but rather, if you are using it, how to design it. Prezi is a tool that has been around for a number of years. Uh, it is presentation software. So in that sense, it is similar to PowerPoint or Google Slides, but it differs in that it is nonlinear by its nature. So the big strength of Prezi is that it allows a teacher to kind of back off, back out of the view, to zoom out and get a, a big picture, an overview of what all the material is and the relationships between all the different nodes, all the different areas of, of information presentation. Now, a teacher could use this in several ways. Uh, one way is the teacher could use this to kind of switch off from tools like PowerPoint just to change things up. Uh, another thing a teacher could do is select to use Prezi when uh, the, the uh, strengths of Prezi could really add to the strength of the presentation. In other words, a teacher can back off, zoom out, kind of look at things, and then even click on certain nodes out of order and zoom in on them to be able to see what's going on as needed in the classroom. Another thing a teacher can do is ask students who are familiar with this tool and prefer its use to uh, do homework. Uh, using the Prezi tool. Remember to capitalize on the nonlinear uh, strengths of Prezi. As a teacher, you could create a resource with uh, a number of nodes of information, and then you could create a particular path through that information uh, as appropriate for specific groups of learners. So nonlinear and then paths that you can design. Uh, in other words, which order will the slides play out? So don't forget to capitalize on that uh, as you look at designing a Prezi. You could embed information uh, that will be extra information for learners. And if they're interested, or should you give an assignment to explore a little deeper, they could look at that individually and explore more on that topic. And again, consider that nonlinear aspect. If you are teaching with this tool, you can click outside of the nodes and then and go to a full view of all the steps involved in the Prezi and then pick a particular node to focus in on at that time. As with many online services and tools, Prezi does offer a basic account for free and it also offers, uh, well, it also caters to business. It also caters to educational folks. And there is a, an EDU Plus educational account that does have a charge per month. There's also a, an EDU Teams account that also carries a charge. Uh, so if you're not using Prezi currently, and if you would like to try it, uh, click into the basic account, the free one, and sign up to use that tool for the purpose of what we're looking at here in this video. So let's take a look inside Prezi. So here I've started with a template and I've already added some, some elements 
within these different brackets, these different nodes, these different frames. Notice, easy to do. I can click in here, I can click to add some text. And then I can click in each of these frames and add different elements. Notice up top, I can insert all different types of elements. You can also use the customize in order to customize the theme and, and change all kinds of aesthetics about the, about the Prezi and how it's going to look. Now, let me back out here, and here I can edit the path. So notice, after we design something here, we can also edit the path one, two, three, four, and so on, that the user will walk through the material. So this really differs from the PowerPoint kind of presentation in that there aren't any slides. These slides are really just frames. They're nodes along the way. And the way that we travel through this can be accomplished through the path. But I don't, I'm going to exit the path right now. I don't just have to travel this path. But let me start by traveling the path. So when I click into the very first element, here I am, and then I can, if I want to present, it would start to walk me through. I'm just, I'm in the editing mode right now, but it does the same thing. It's going to walk me through. And notice how we can turn around and find our way through. Here, there's a, there's a YouTube video when I'm presenting that will come live. And then I move to my, my very last frame. Now, when I'm presenting, I can zoom out. And let's say that I wanted to bypass this step and go right to this one. I can simply click on it and uh, zoom in and click on it and travel there, which is, which is really nice. So we have that non-linear uh, way to travel through all this material. And then I can zoom back out and I can see the, the hole as well as, right now I'm seeing the hole upside down because that's where I last left it, but uh, in, in that orientation. But the idea being that I can see the whole picture as well as the individual pieces rather than, uh, as opposed to a linear presentation where you're seeing all the elements in a particular order. In addition to you as a teacher using Prezi as an alternative uh, presentation system, either to just simply change things up from from using the, the traditional system that, that you, you use all the time, or to uh, capitalize on the strengths of Prezi when it supports the content that you're teaching, you could also have students create with Prezi. You could have students plan through Prezi, because again, they can see the whole topic, and then they can create steps through that topic and then determine a path through that topic ultimately to determine how they're going to actually present it in what order. So in essence, your students could use Prezi as a mind map and it could assist them in their planning and in the organizing of their thoughts. It would also be a very good tool to use with students uh, and with small groups of students who are going to work together on some project. So let's start considering some of the design issues associated with Prezi and how to address them. First, when you're looking to design a Prezi, start by creating an overall design. Look at organizing the main steps of the content in a logical manner. And then after you do this, create a path through those nodes of material. So capitalize on the design that's available in Prezi. Use spatial placement of individual elements and, and treat that with a knowledge of the whole of what the, what the overall Prezi looks like. And then in individual notes, as in PowerPoint, you can create links and videos and put additional text, bulleted text, and so on. You can place additional material within the individual nodes but again, we're looking at not just like in the PowerPoint world, we tend to look at slide by slide. In the Prezi world, we're really looking at the individual nodes 
and then backing off and looking at the overall whole and then creating paths in which we could present those nodes in a different order as appropriate for learners. When designing a Prezi, instead of starting with a blank uh, screen, a blank presentation, uh, it's a good idea to begin with one of their templates. Some of my favorites are for sequential stepwise uh, content, where you're teaching one step after another. Here's a template called the journey, and you see that they, they have certain nodes uh, embedded along the way of the path. So that's a good way to illustrate step by step that a learner has to follow sequential steps in order to uh, reach the goal of, of whatever that task is. Another favorite of mine is the, the big idea in which we have various sub ideas, but they're not sequential. They're just various items that are related in that they support that big idea, whatever it is. Similarly, here's one in which you're going to explain a topic. And again, this is just a, a touch of the many, many um, templates that Prezi uh, offers to us. Here we've got a, a main topic, and then we have various subtopics, and not necessarily in any particular order. Again, you can, you can suggest the order by creating a particular path into all of those different topics and then subtopics. So we can create a path through those different nodes. So think about starting your Prezi by looking at a template and selecting the most appropriate one to guide the learners into the material and also to help organize that content in an effective way. We have been talking about capitalizing on the nonlinear uh, aspects of Prezi in which you could, you could get on a path, but then you can also back away from the path and, and you can skip to different places by showing the whole as well as the, the path through all of those nodes. We said that you can encourage learners to explore material. You, you can embed more material in there, more in, in enriching content. As we're saying this, be aware that you could get carried away. Don't be too wild with the visual of effects. Don't do it just for the sake of a cool um, technological effect. It is possible to create a dizzying path through the material in, in which the learner could be distracted. So be careful not to go over the top with your design. As we mentioned when we were talking about designing PowerPoint presentations, remember that text is a large part of what we're going to be presenting through. So uh, keep your text short. If you're using bulleted text, keep it short because as a teacher, you still don't want to read from that Prezi um, anymore. You want to read directly from a PowerPoint. Also remember the layout and the relationships. As we look at design, we keep mentioning that uh, spatial layouts imply relationship between elements. So when we look at Prezi, it's a tool that adds an extra level of complexity here. It's like another dimension, uh, which in PowerPoint and Google Slides, you, you just don't achieve that that uh, level of complexity. For example, in Prezi, you could make certain elements larger than others, and you could embed one node within another. Well, is that what you want to do? Like, what kind of implication is there for the learner? So, in other words, the bottom line is keep, when designing a, a Prezi, keep in mind the overall picture as well as the individual elements, because there's just that extra dimension that happens in this tool that we don't typically see in other presentation tools. Use the Zoom tool very carefully. Do not overuse, because if you're not careful the way you create your path, if this is too wild, it could disturb some viewers to the point that they could feel like a seasickness type of effect. So be very cautious with this. Instead of just using the Zoom tool, consider using the fade-in animation tool. 
uh, as in PowerPoint. Uh, this capability allows you to not overwhelm your learners. It lets you put more information uh, on the screen at one point in time, or in the case of Prezi, in one node at one point in time, without overcrowding, and also without overwhelming the learners. In this video, I purposely did not attempt to teach how to use the Prezi tool, but I did provide a number of additional links to learning the mechanics of both creating and designing Prezi's in case you are interested to learn more about this tool. So if you're interested, please consult these resources out on Blackboard. In summary, we found that Prezi is an online presentation tool that is a good alternative to PowerPoint, Google Slides, and similar products. And we found that one of the strengths of Prezi is the nonlinear aspects of the tool. So in review, designers should capitalize on these strengths and the unique features of this tool to get the most out of it for your learners. To wrap up this week's class, we're going to hold four activities online. Our first activity, as we've done in previous weeks, is going to be a debriefing of the class. As usual, I've started with uh, some starter questions to spark our discussion. Keep in mind that you do not need to answer all of those questions, but they're starters, and between all of us, we'll probably uh, end up touching on a little bit of each of these questions in our discussion. For activity two, let's look at some tips in designing navigation in all the different areas that we looked at, PowerPoint, virtual museums in PowerPoint, and also in Prezi. Like we covered a lot of ground, um, so we looked in so many different areas. So let's use this as a, a way of reviewing and highlighting and pulling out the salient points. So contribute to this discussion some information about do's and don'ts about designing navigation in these applications. And uh, uh, take a look at least at two of the applications, maybe touch on all three, but, but definitely at least two of those applications. And between all of us, let's discuss what are some of the main highlights that we can remember. Our final two activities for this week's class will be guided projects. They'll be hands-on with some of these tools and give you the opportunity to directly apply what we, what we considered about navigational techniques. So activity three will be design and create a Prezi. Now some folks already have a membership in Prezi and, and use it, and, and, and some people will not, and this will be newer to you. So let's create a basic Prezi. It doesn't have to be really, really involved. And let's focus on, um, besides touching the product and seeing how it works, if you're unfamiliar with it, let's look at applying the design guidelines that are appropriate to this tool. Let's capitalize on those nonlinear aspects. Let's look at how we visually organize the material. Create a good path through material. Can you put enough helpful information and interesting information to encourage exploration by your learners? Our last activity for this week's class is a choice. It's going to be a guided project to either design and create a PowerCast or design and create a virtual museum. Now, if you're going to design the virtual museum, you know that we did look at uh, the templates from Dr. Keeler. Feel free to download and use one of those templates. If you're very creative and have a lot of extra time this week, feel free to create your own or do a variation on one of hers. But again, you don't have to do this. She has created some robust templates. Now, since we're doing so much hands-on this week, don't be overwhelmed and don't feel that you have to complete all of the, these activity number three and number four during the week span. If you need to go over and, and take into the next week, no problem with that at all. In next week's class, we're going to consider Universal Design for Learning, also known as UDL, and we're going to consider the implications of UDL for interface design. 
and then our hands-on application will be creating and designing a screencast. Have a good week, and we'll see you at our next class.